sort of adjustment meeting for the town of Merrimack. I'm um, going to ask everybody if they could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The next uh, zoning board meeting will be Wednesday, February 28th. Um, I will have Rich read in the preamble, please. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will proceed with the petitions in the order they are listed on the agenda unless the board deems it appropriate to take a petition out of order. State law and local ordinances set out the criteria that must be met for this board to grant a request. The minimum requirements are outlined on the form provided by the Community Development Office, and the petitioner should proceed with this format, providing ad um, with this format to provide adequate justification for the board to grant the request. The chair will open the meeting to hear testimony either for or against the request. All discussion will be between the speaker and the board. Please be respectful of all and in the interest of time refrain from repeating previous testimony. No new documentation will be accepted by the board for consideration this evening. But the board reserves the right to ask for additional testimony at any time. After hearing the facts from all parties regarding the petition, the chairman will close the public hearing and the board will deliberate and vote on the request before moving on to the next petition. Please turn off all cell phones and pagers. And uh, while those uh, who will be speaking tonight Stand up to be sworn in. Please stand. To sp if you're going to be speaking, please stand up to be sworn in. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. All right. All right. We're actually going to move the order around um, based on the fact that we're waiting for uh, another uh, member of the board to show up. Um, so we are actually going to be hearing um, the Justin Sleeper uh, petition first. So... Um, before we get to that, uh, Kathleen and Lenny, uh, both of you are going to be sitting in this evening. Um, okay. I need to vote on that. We got that, Z. Uh, Kathleen will sit in for Fran, and right now Lenny's sitting in for uh, Tony. Unless Tony should show up. All right, so petition we're going to hear first is Justin Sleeper, petitioner, owner, uh, variance under Section 3.02 of the Zoning Ordinance um, to permit a three-family residence on a lot with approximately 16,901 square feet of area, whereas 120,000 square feet is required, front setbacks of approximately 30 feet and 36 feet respectively, whereas 50 feet is required, side setbacks of 15 feet and 20 feet respectively, whereas 50 feet is required, and a lot depth of approximately 120 feet, whereas 200 feet is required. The parcel is located at 14 Hoyt Street in the R Residential and Aquifer Conservation District's tax map 4D-4, lot 025, case number 2018-01. So what I need you to do is I need you to sign in, um, and then also make sure that the it is a bright green light on the microphone before you speak. And then uh, after you sign in, if you could just state your name and then give us kind of a, a brief overview of uh, what you're looking to do. All right. My name is Justin Sleeper. Uh, again, uh, I had a variance or an application into... Is your mic on? You should... yeah. It's green. You okay. All right. Go. Okay. All right. Go this um, a variance in or application into have a multifamily at 14 Hoyt Street. Um, I did receive an... I, I saw an email later on, I think, from the fire marshal that said something about three units had to have sprinkler systems installed now, okay. which I wasn't aware of originally. Um, so I don't know, is it possible to have it possibly just zoned as a duplex instead, now having that information, or would that be a whole separate application process? If you were not going to pursue the third unit and just do a two-family, um, that would be a whole separate, separate yeah, you would application. Right. Because I wasn't aware of the requirements for a sprinkler system in the three unit. Do you Robert, does he need a sprinkler system if he's on a two family? Two family that cannot be required. Okay. Yeah, it would uh, 
two family residence you'd still it would be a separate application you'd still need to come back here because the lot's not large enough to support a two family but would, right yeah you'd have to withdraw this one without prejudice and then um okay Just file a new one based off the duplex yeah, it's based on a having to install a sprinkler system i would rather do the duplex it's already it already has an in-law but obviously a duplex would be a different okay do you want to do you want to withdraw your petition for this evening yeah is there gonna is there a separate application fee for another application then how does that work yeah there would be um but you'd, yeah, you'd withdraw this one and then file a new one with a new fee and everything else yep um if you still want to weigh your options too you can also uh, request a continuance to the next meeting so you can take a month to kind of figure out exactly how you want to do um how you want to proceed and if it, you can certainly withdraw it after the fact with us and we can just let them know it's been withdrawn um but a continuance doesn't cost you money right if you right. want to sit for a month and think about it yeah i mean I'd, I'd have to continue then because i don't know i wasn't I was aware of the Okay. situation I guess okay all right. okay all right very well then we'll uh, do we'll continue do you and notify um, I guess do you want to do a continuance for next month or do you want to yeah. notify community development as far as when you want to continue uh, I would well, say you, next you, month you, or yeah, continue you, for you, next you'd month. have okay. to set the motion now all right so i um, going to do a motion can I get a I can I can cast that right yeah yeah right. so a motion to continue uh, Justin sleeper uh, petitioner variance under section 3.02 the zoning ordinance as stated um, do I have a second a continuance for the February um, 28th meeting I have a second which is Lynn sorry <laughs> it, it's been a really long day sorry do I, I have a second? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. And two, four, five, zero, zero. See you next month. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Lenny, I think you're recusing yeah. yourself on this one. I, I understand. Smoke them if you got them. All right. <laughs> All right, I was hoping that we were going to have our uh, Tony was going to be in, but uh, since he's not, I'm going to move forward with the uh, next petition, which is uh, David Paul and Tony Paul of 312 Babusik Lake Road request for rehearing regarding case number 2017 34, in which the board voted to deny by failure to obtain three votes in favor an appeal on of an administrative decision under 2.02.1 a3 of the zoning ordinance seeking to overturn the community development staff decision not to permit the construction of a dwelling community a dwelling unit on the property housed within an existing barn slash garage the parcel is located at 312b babusik lake road in the r residential district tax map 6a-2 lot 159- Zero 09 there will be no public testimony uh, on this matter and, and it's to the board to um, discuss the letter that was um, um, put forward and um, make a determination if there's grounds for a rehearing right and I do just want to make note um, there are only four members here tonight and I did uh, research it and talk to uh, Director Thompson, and he did inform me that the board is legally obligated to act on the request this evening. So, so um, I'll leave it up to the board for discussion on uh, on the matter. I understand we've got some additional information that we did not have available last month. Do we? The, there was a letter provided in your packets uh, that uh, the Pauls, through their attorney, Mr. Attorney Mitchell, um, provided. So that is the only thing the board can consider, the contents of that letter at this point right now. And that's why I was thinking that there was more information in that letter than we had last month. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's up to you guys okay. to determine. Going through the, um, I think a lot of this was brought up in conversation, though. Okay. It wasn't documented per se but um, it was discussed you have the notes right here from last month yeah. meeting so yeah, yeah I, read them. I, I I guess with that being said um, was there just curious was there something specific that um, 
that you noticed that we did not discuss? The only, well, wait a minute. Let me see if it was in the letter. I think um, when we addressed the, the easement, um, I don't think we had the information regarding the easement that's included in this letter. And that's why I think it would be reasonable to grant them a rehearing on this. I agree. We, we talked about the easement, but there was no information um, given as far as the fact that it met the guidelines or, or anything else. So I think this is additional information that we did not have. You're referring to the proposed right away that now adds a formal proposed easement? Yep. Which shortens the distance traveled over the great property to approximately 100 feet? That one there? Yep. Okay. The only thing that I was thinking about that was that, um, you know, it does state in the in RSA that right away and easement are treated pretty much the same. So we would still be using the same information even if we did call it an easement, it wouldn't change anything. I think it might. Um, the staff decision was based on the fact that it was not on a, on a road. Yes. And we said that we didn't have any information they talked about an easement but we had no information on the easement so had no way of knowing if the easement in fact met the criteria set forth in that uh, 674.411 and without that information we couldn't grant the the uh, administrative appeal because we had nothing to show that the easement was in fact matched the criteria it was not a private road. And all they said was this easement, but we had no information on it. So if they're able to provide the, which it sounds like they're able to provide the information on the easement to show that it does, re, or it does meet the criteria in 674.41 Roman numeral one, then I think that's new information that would allow us to, to rehear it. So what you're saying is that if we tangibly had that documentation, that would be reason to rehear? Yes. They're stating that it, in fact, does meet it, which they didn't say it did last meeting. <clears throat> okay. So I guess then my question is, um, I guess to Robert, uh, can we... Can we approve a rehearing contingent on that? If that's what the board determines, that the, there's new information available, you certainly can grant a rehearing. And then at the rehearing, they would present that information to you. Yeah, if they didn't come, if they didn't come to the rehearing with the easement so that we could see that it did, in fact, meet the criteria, then that's on them. But if they do have an actual easement that they're going to present, then that's new information, and I think we can, we can rehear it. Okay. Well, do I hear a motion? You need a motion for this? I will need a motion. We will need to vote on it. Where are we? Then I move we grant the request for a rehearing regarding case 2017-31 in which the board voted to deny an appeal of an administrative decision under 2.02.1A3 of the zoning ordinance seeking to overturn the community development staff decision not to permit the construction of a dwelling unit on the property housed within an existing barn garage. Parcel located at 312B, Boosick Lake Road in the R Residential District, based on the fact that there is new information that had not been presented at the original hearing. A second. Yeah, a second. Kathleen seconds. 
All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? 4-0. It's approved for the rehearing. So, so we don't rehear it tonight. We rehear it. It will be rehearing yep. is set for the 28th? February. February, yeah, may, the February want, meeting. Yeah. So. With, with documentation backing up the easement. That's on to, them. They have to have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they All don't right. have it. So, so then that's they'll probably walk out the same way. Um, I do want to. I do. Is <clears throat> I do want to jump back um, on to Justin Sleeper. The the he was make sure that it is on the record that it, the continuance was the petitioner's choice. Okay, good. I'm sure that's on. All right, great, this, excellent. Best time for it to be here for a couple of um, <laughs> And then the, let's see. Do we have minutes? Minutes. Actually, a couple things. Um, there's a going to be. Well, let's do the minutes first. So, discussion regu regarding the minutes, approval of the minutes. I move we approve as printed. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero zero approval. Seconded by Kathleen. Um, Rob actually has. Um, we do have some um, procedural um, stuff that's come from our legal. Okay. That we. I just want to. Rob to talk to me about, and I just want to have him just discuss with the board. And this is going to be something that's going to affect us going forward as a board. So, Rob. Yep. Uh, just blanket statement from uh, legal counsel, just advising the board just to not muddy the waters when you're trying to make a decision on a case, uh, whether to make a motion to grant or deny. They suggested always make a motion to grant first, even if you know it's very right. clear that it's going to fail. That would have solved the okay, problem. Yeah, make the vote very clear. Make yep. it even if it's zero to five. State yep. that, and then turn around and make the motion to deny afterwards, and get the two separate, very clear yep. votes in there. So even if we have, so if we have a motion and everybody on the board, we know it's it's not going to go. Make the motion to approve. Every somebody still has to make the motion to approve. Yep. Now, I can't make the motion to approve. Can I? Sure. As the chair. Yeah, the chair. Tech, there's nothing prohibiting you um, from okay. doing it. I mean. It's, it's probably better to let another member of the board always do it, but there's, there's nothing that would prohibit you from making a motion. So going forward, all, and, and I'm just saying this correctly, all petitions going forward, it's always a motion to approve first. Is going forward, everything's a motion to approve. Yeah, and read, if, it the if it dies, letter, it dies, it dies, then we do the motion. I recognize what yeah. the issue was and said, I should have done it the other way. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so going forward, it's always a motion, it's going to be a motion to approve. If it if it's denied, then we don't need the other motion. No, to then you do. Then you, I know that you do because Tim has uh, made comments about that a couple. Yeah, times. just it, it makes the record perfectly clear. It's just okay. even if the other one fails, okay, that's fine, and technically okay. that's fine to stand on. Just turn it around the other way right after. And then and then and when we make the motion to deny, Evan, and then that's when you state the reason, you know, yep, for why it's being denied. So, all right. All right, other than that, move to adjourn. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. Uh, vote <laughs> and second. The second? Second. Uh, Rich seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All done.